This video is going to show you how to simplify a compound expression involving ad adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing numbers according to the rules of significant figures. So here's the example problem. If I look at this problem, I'm going to use my order of operations in order to tackle it. That is, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction in that order. So I go through and I'll do all the math, and when I get my final answer, I get 456.5. I didn't round any numbers along the way. I kept every decimal in my calculator as I worked this entire problem, and that's my answer. It's just a straight answer, up, no, straight up answer as if it's in a math class. Now, let's look at significant figures. So I'm going to re-examine the problem, keeping track of sig figs. 21.3, that's where I'm going to start because that's my exponent, and that's what PEMDAS says to do. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, so ex exponents. 21.3, well that's three sig figs, because it's multiplying. So I'm just going to keep track of the sig figs for this multiplication part of it. And when I get my final answer, I get 453.69. But three sig figs, that means 453, that's my sig fig. I keep the 69 mathematically, but I'm tracking sig figs now, so I'm going to put a line under the three. The line under three is not a math operation, it's just me keeping track of where that last estimated sig fig is. Next up is going to be the multiplication and division. So that's going to be everything over here on the right-hand side. So if I do this all in one step, since it's multiplied and divided, that's going to be two sig figs. So I'm to keep track of two sig figs. So I do the calculation. And again, two sig figs, keeping track of the stuff on the right. So my final answer comes out to be 15.2 for everything that was on the right with two sig figs. So again, counted over two sig figs and underlined it. Even though I kept all my decimals, I'm tracking sig figs this time. So now when I look at this, I'm adding and subtracting my numbers. So the rule is I round to the position where I have the greatest rounding. In other words, whichever estimated number is farthest to the left. Previously, I told you to write all these vertically and just underline your estimated values. Whichever one's farthest to the left, that's where you round. For the sake of space on this presentation, I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is just do them all in a line, which is a little more difficult to keep track of. So this is the ones place. The 9 is in the hundreds place, and the 5 is in the ones place. So the ones place is farthest to the left. That means it's the biggest rounding error. So I'm going to round the 456.5 to the ones place, which if I round it to the ones place, it's going to give me 456. Now this is weird because of the rules for rounding with significant figures. So when rounding with significant figures, remember, if it's 457.5, it would round up to 458. If it's 456.5, it would round down to 456. The rule is, it's important to pay attention to the number to the left of the 5. If the number to the left of the 5 is odd, it rounds up. If the number to the left of the 5 is even, and there's nothing after the 5, it's all zeros after the 5, then it rounds down. So for example, 456.50 rounds down to 456. 456.51, well, to the right of the 5, it's not all zeros. There's a 1 there, so that's actually going to round up to 457. Let's look at one more example problem. I've got 8 squared minus 9 divided by the quantity of 12.34 divided by 19.3. So when I see this, even though there aren't any parentheses, I see the top is parentheses and the bottom of parentheses. And I do all the math and do all the calculations, keeping all the decimals in every step, and I get negative 7.902298851. Now I've got to retrace everything following the rules of significant figures. So the 8 squared, that's like 8 times 8, and that's one sig fig. So one sig fig for the 8 squared in the top. That number becomes 64. And I'm going to put a line underneath the 6 because there's only one sig fig. Minus 9, now this is an addition problem. So working with the top of this, in that addition problem, I've got to find whichever estimated number is farthest to the left. This is in the 1's place, that's in the 10's place. So that's farthest to the left. So when I get my answer, I'm going to track it in the 10's place. So I get 55, and that's in the 10's place. So I write down the whole number, but I put a line underneath it to keep track of it. In the denominator, I've got two numbers to subtract. Again, looking at the sig figs for addition. And it's the tenths place, tenths place. So I'm going to round. So I'll do the calculation to get 55 over negative 6.96. See, I underlined where those estimated values were. For division, I just count the number of sig figs. So on the top, I have 1. and the bottom, I have 2. That's the 6 and the 9. So the least number one sig fig is where around. So the negative 7.902298851, rounding to one sig fig, becomes negative 7.9. And we're done.